This is the Boys Podcast from TV Podcast Industries, and we're talking about The Boys Presents Diabolical, Season 1, Episode 2, an animated short where pissed off soups kill their parents. <gasps> Welcome back, fellow boys and girls. Uh, this is TV Podcast Industries. I'm one of your hosts, John, and we are talking about episode two of The Boys Presents Diabolical. The name of the episode is probably going to be half, will take me ha- half the time of this podcast. <laughs> uh, the title is An Animated Short Where Pissed Off Soups Kill Their Parents. Excellent. I'm one of your other hosts, Derek. Chris, unfortunately, unable to join us for these first couple of episodes anyway of The Boys Diabolical. But this is an interesting second episode. (laughs) It really, really is. Last time Um, it was all about the kind of as close as they could get to the comic books. This time, uh, a very different style. Yes, it's very Rick and Morty uh, is this episode. um, And it is equally as bonkers and irreverent as the first one uh, if not more so given the carte blanche that they had with um coming up with all these uh pissed off soups who are going (laughs) after their parents on a mission of revenge absolutely just before we get into the details of the episode if you want to subscribe to the podcast you can subscribe over on tvpodcastindustries.com uh you can also find us on any uh Drunk or Sober Podcast Catcher, just search for TV Podcast Industries or The Boys TV Podcast. I think you should find us uh, under that. Um, And you can also email us to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com if you have any thoughts about any of the episodes of The Boys Diabolical. Yes. Derek, uh, what are some of the details for this episode? Well, you kind of mentioned a little bit already. This episode was written by Justin Roiland and Ben Baith. Uh, Justin Roiland is probably most well known for his roles on Rick and Morty. He's the uh, the star of Rick and Morty. Um, you can definitely tell his voice in this episode. And the animation style is inspired by Justin Roiland's aesthetic, uh, according to the press release. So, yes, it is meant to feel like it's of the world of Rick and Morty, really, um, and of Justin Roiland and his, his style. Uh, but interestingly, Parker Simmons, who's the director of the episode, does come from animation, but not from Rick and Morty, so he's attempted to emulate that style. Uh, He comes from um, DC Super Friends, did 15 episodes of of DC Super Friends, so um, it's quite interesting that they were able to emulate it that well, that you could tell the fields of that universe, right? Yeah, definitely. It just, you know, the eyes, the eyes and the the teeth and the nose, all those just scream Rick and Morty, as well as the some of the voice acting as well so that's true yes uh really really good <laughs> that's true well john do you want to give us your wooden line synopsis for episode two of the boys presents diabolical sure literally the title of this episode an animated short where pissed off soups kill their parents <laughs> nice i like yeah. it i like it yeah there's not really too much more to say to it uh, <laughs> dare, dare i say it Yes, they're pissed off. The reason they're pissed off, though, of course, is they have shit powers and have been abandoned by their parents. Mm. And it does link a little into the show where the revelation that the um, compound V that was given by Voight Industries to uh, pregnant women Mm. uh, in order to generate the superpowers, this has all come out in the wash. And so they these these. these soups, uh, these these kids that have been abandoned because they've got really bad powers are suddenly realizing why they are in this predicament, mm-hmm. why they have been put out to adoption effectively in, into a care home for, um, for, well, yeah. for children. And that's what has made them angry and intent on revenge. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's an interesting one, isn't it? Because it is it is quite tied in with the storyline that was in the boys TV show. But the creativity on display here, Justin <laughs> Roiland and and, uh, and Ben Bath of the characters that come up with, there is way too many characters to go through. I think uh, nine major characters, um, I think, or ten, even 10 major characters that are in here. So do you want to give some of your favorites, John, some of the favorite characters that you have? I have to say, um, 
one of my favorites is Boombox, and that is because of the Hooty and the Blowfish. Is it's the only thing he can play, and of course, Hooty and the Blowfish are from the nineties. One of my favorite albums. Their their first album. I mean, it won Grammys and it all is. sorts. And I absolutely loved uh, that album to bits. And I love how it is literally the only song that's played through. Uh, the entire episode. They certainly got their money's worth on it. I think it's played uh, three or four times in the episode. I always forget that you're a Hootie and the Blowfish Blo- yeah. fan. Uh, I lived in Chapel Hill, in, or sorry, I lived in North Carolina when that album came out, and the band are from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. So it was like, it was everywhere. And this is a time when there were massive albums um, out there. But the only thing you would hear in every single shop or every single bar or every single restaurant that you went to was Hootie and the Blowfish. Yeah. It was just, they were like the Lighthouse family, if you remember them. From yes, the I, I remember them as well. Uh, I like their albums everywhere. as well. Yeah. Oh, right. I, I think the... But my <laughs> this favorite, is why we don't have a music podcast, uh, fellow <laughs> boys and girls. <laughs> my favorite uh, bit is where they have the the montage of the kids extracting their revenge and Ghost, one of the, the soup kids, mm. says... Boombox, we need a violent montage music, and it's just a ramped up version of Hootie and the Blowfish. <laughs> and not even I, ramped up. It, and it's it the, is same, the same song. Yeah, it's the same track as well. Yeah. And indeed, when Boombox goes to um, kill his own parents, mm-hmm. it's through Hootie and the B- Blowfish being ramped up to huge volumes yep. that uh, make uh, the parents' heads explode. So really, really enjoyed Boombox. Um, I absolutely loved Aqua Agua, mm. which was effectively <laughs> Mexican water in yep. a paddling pool. Yep. And that was literally um, that soup uh, yep. was just water, water with the Mexican anything. flag. No tidal waves, just, just water. Just water. <laughs> um, and of course, there is... Picante balls I as knew well, might be a favorite. which was absolutely hilarious. And again, the 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 revenge killing on his father was just sublime. <laughs> where it was silhouetted uh, in a in um a, a, through Japanese screens mm-hmm. of him putting his picante balls directly onto the throat of his father oh, to dear. to kill him. So, um, very inventive ways of um of killing parents uh, in in this episode. So uh, interesting. I think the other, you know, one that stands out as well is obviously booby face. uh, And indeed, yes, yes. (laughs) just because of how, like how someone has come up with that. And then that has gotten into an animation that is on Prime Video. <laughs> but indeed, the revenge killing of Bo- uh, of Boobyface's mum was them all looking through the window going, well, she looks fine. Mm. Uh, flashback, one of the other soups, you can only do flashbacks, yep. sees that she actually mutilates animals. And it's like, let's kill her. And uh, it, it's simply... Um, a shotgun through the window from booby face exactly but the adoring and grateful puppies um, and animals that come from uh, his his mother's house uh do ultimately uh, make booby face leak um, yeah. all over the screen so again you know just absolutely out there but on so so funny <laughs> absolutely i think you've actually taken most of the uh, of the soups that are in the episode but i <laughs> absolutely love and it's be- probably because it's played by one of my favorite actors uh, when i was growing up christian slater uh, who plays paul the narrator i absolutely <laughs> love that this is his superpower he tells everybody what they're doing and what they what they will be doing all the time he narrates yes. everything because it gets really dark towards the end of the episode at the oh, start yeah. of the episode it's just the voiceover he's t- he's basically telling you what what's going on by the end of the episode he's narrating to his father that he is scooping off his face with a spoon wearing it and telling him he's sorry because he looks like his father in the mirror uh, really really brutal yes it, it, yeah. he the narrator probably has the most um sort of dark storyline because he he Cho- chooses not to go with the other uh-huh. uh, soups, uh, but knows about it and then does it later uh, and is wearing the face of his father. Yeah. Um, because ultimately, all the... I think it's with Ghost, who I have to say is probably... It sounds like the worst mm-hmm. kind of thing. is She's a ghost, 
but she still feels hungry but can't eat anything. And she's at her parents, but she uses another one of the soups, mm-hmm. Mo Slow, who moves very slowly. You know, I have to say <laughs> I really like Mo Slow. I think it could be really yes. annoying if it was a much longer episode, but I think they played the timing of him so good when he's killing his father, um, played by Keenan Thompson from uh, Saturday Night Live. Yeah. When he's killing his father, and his father's going, what is that you're doing? And he goes... I'm killing you. But they play just the the cadence of his speech is perfect. So you're not really annoyed. You are just listening to what it is that he's saying. And don't scream at the way he's saying it to him is really, really good. And then they use that again for a ghost to kill her father, to possess him almost. To, so that she to use the like knife. She's yeah. the one that uses the knife to kill her father. Yeah. But ultimately, her mother has called Voight and uh-huh. Homelander arrives uh, and effectively kills them all, with the exception of ghosts. Because he can't. Uh, with his laser eyes, because yeah. he can't. Because yeah. he can't. And she spreads all of the information that they found out about all the kids' parents to everybody else. So um, this revenge spree, I guess, will go on, um, is, is what's happened here. It's just that group that start the revenge spree. They all get killed by Vosh, but... Uh, she is now giving it to all the rest of the uh, all the rest of the kids, so that's why we see the narrator uh, at the end of the episode able to kill his father. And I think some of the parent the scenes with the parents abandoning their kids, whilst and or the explanations as to why they have done uh, this, you know, also it puts in context why the kids are doing it, but is also hilarious in and of itself. Certainly around Kingdom, one of the soups um, who transforms into any animal in the animal kingdom but also not only body but mind so if he turns so into dumb, but really funny it, it, it is so i think one of the one of the um attacks they they throw kingdom on to constrict uh, turn into a snake and constrict but he's a snake he doesn't remember what he's supposed to exactly. do so it just slithers away <laughs> and they say like catch him so he doesn't run off absolutely but when he goes to kill his dad's his, his parents um and you see the two of them in bed together they go we had to give you up because we thought you were going to shit on the rug effectively he keeps turning into a dog um which is what he says and then acting like a dog but one of his dads goes, "We gave you up because you kept you kept wanting the shit in the rug." He turns into it into a, a shark, kills one of his dads, and the other dad you hear him running away, going, "Oh no, my rug, my rug!" Before <laughs> no. he gets eaten. Um, yeah, some some really funny ones. Ghosts, mom and dad, I thought was really funny. Where the reason they're giving her up is because she goes, "I'm hungry," and they go, "Look what we have to put up with." Isn't this awful? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah, really, really. Um, Interesting ideas from Justin Roiland right out of his mind. The guy has so many interesting um, concepts coming out of it. I know Dan Harmon is heavily involved in the writing of, of Rick and Morty. That's his show, of course. But I know Justin Roiland has a uh, has quite a lot of contribution to that. And you can tell that from this episode. It's a revenge short, basically. It and it, it's very inventive, very imaginative. Um, and yes, it is not necessarily for everyone but i thought this was another great great episode yeah excellent what, what do you have a, a score for this one i do i have uh four and a half terror ball licking uh out of five <laughs> okay. um it's it, it's it's ju- I, I think because they're so digestible mm-hmm um, the short, you know, very rarely more than 15 minutes, uh, between 10 and 15. Yeah, yeah. They're very digestible. They're not they're not complicated, but they jam pack with so much imagination, inventiveness, yeah. uh, rip, riffs on other well-known animations yeah. and, and styles and so on. It's really, really good. Awesome. And this was just, um, yeah, it was just a... Rev- a revenge killing um uh short of abandoned children who were abandoned by their parents because the powers that resulted from their vort injection mm-hmm. effectively gave them really bad powers um and they were abandoned and so yeah, yeah it's just really good I, I really like this idea. It's effectively going to a bunch of really creative people and going, if you had the opportunity to do anything you wanted, no restrictions at all, 
in the universe will animate what would you do uh, this is the this is what they came up with uh, final gag that I liked for the episode um, I love when the name of the episode finally came up an animated short where pissed off soups kill their parents and then you see on the road as they're going off to kill the parents a note saying this is probably quite late in the episode to put this in but we can do whatever we want <laughs> <laughs> very good very good stuff that's it for episode two, I think, uh, for The Boys Present Diabolical. We'll be back tomorrow with our thoughts about episode three of The Boys Diabolical. Yeah, thank you so much, fellow boys and girls, for tuning in to our little uh, snippet mm. on all things The Boys Diabolical. Uh, speak with you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.